I'm Gregory McGuire. I'm here to talk about my new book, Egg and Spoon. I'm so happy to be doing this book. It is the result of six or seven years worth of dreaming, fretting, fuming, puzzling. And what has resulted is a fairy tale, a novel length fairy tale set in Tsarist Russia, a Russia that simultaneously is filled with all the benefits of the Industrial Revolution, including great railway lines. And at the same time, the Russian witch Baba Yaga and the magical firebird, which is the spirit of the Russian landscape, are side by side with contemporary history. In this story, two girls change places, a rich girl and a serf girl, and they end up intertwining their lives, one in the palace of the Tsar, the other in the hut of Baba Yaga the witch. I am so happy to be bringing out a thick, dense, joyous, comic, and I hope moral story, Egg and Spoon. It pretty much fulfills the promise I made a few years ago to write another book for children that had all the intensity and the density and the, the brio and perhaps bravado of the works that I've done for adults. In this book, I think I've done that. The earliest memory I have of writing a story was kindergarten age, a story called Timothy the Cat. In fact, I can say it in its entirety. Once upon a time, there was a cat named Timothy, and then it died. The end. The thing about Egg and Spoon, of which I'm most proud, is the characterization of Baba Yaga, the notorious Russian witch. Baba Yaga has iron teeth, and she lives in a house that stands on two chicken legs. But for my purposes, she lives across a thousand years of time and was friends with Dante and Marie Antoinette, as well as people who haven't been born yet. I have a hard time imagining the perfect reader for Egg and Spoon. In fact, not being able to imagine one kept me from starting the book for a long time. But then a friend of mine reminded me that Marie Sendak said, you write the book for yourself. You write the book you would like most to read next. So that's what I did. I wrote it for myself, the adult, and myself, the 10-year-old child who read fairy tales and believed them and believes them still. The best piece of advice I've been given about making art proves to be the best piece of advice I've been given about anything. It's Ben Shahn in The Shape of Content. Basically, it boils down to two words. Pay attention. The responses to my work have been many and varied, including the very first letter I ever got about my first book from a boy who said, you ended up writing a pretty interesting book considering it was so boring for the first two thirds. But what I love best about the responses are from people in areas of life that I have nothing to do with, people in prison, people in hospital, people far away in other countries who write and say, how did you know that this is how I feel? The story is about two eggs. So I have many kinds of eggs here. I have an egg I made in 1977. I painted with a Russian Orthodox church that looks as if it was out of the backdrop for Dr. Zhivago and on the other side, a matryoshka face. The matryoshka, as you probably well know, is the name of the Russian doll that opens to reveal inside it another doll, which opens to reveal inside it another doll. In my story, 
The Russian dolls are important. The Fabergé eggs that were made for the czars are important. And most important of all is the egg laid by the firebird. I just happen to have some English tin soldiers. I put those out because there is an army in this story. I have other kinds of matryoshkas. I have a salt and pepper shaker, a Santa Claus, and a Christmas tree. They didn't really come into the story. I thought they might. I thought, I thought the Russian version of Father Christmas might come into the story, but St. Nicholas, but he didn't. I, I have a panda matryoshka. He doesn't make it into the story at all. He must be in the, in the sequel, I guess. But I loved it anyway. So he stayed there as a kind of guiding spirit. And then there are two important words. One says, give, and one says, believe. The two main characters in this story are two girls who exchange places. It's a kind of a princess and a, and a pauperess, a surf girl and a princess girl changing places. The rich girl does not believe in magic. The poor girl wishes that more people believed in the importance of knowing how to give. So those two words, believe and give, are intertwined throughout the story of Egg and Spoon as the two girls change places dramatically and to great disastrous results.